distinguished delegate eminent speaker ladies and gentlemen a very good morning to all of you on behalf of e portal inspire by international center for automotive technology i am ritansh tiwari extend a very warm welcome to all of you for joining us today for the webinar on agriculture tractors mechanical coupling and drops testing methodology and regulatory requirement being organized by icon under automotive solution portal for industry research and education aspire this webinar is an initiative by icon and inspire for the benefits of industry and startup this is a part of celebration of azadi ka amrit mahotsav which marks the 75th anniversary of our independence it further remembers our commitment towards aatmanirbhar bharat mission in the technology area this webinar focus on mechanical coupling and roll over protection structure devices which are the safety components provided in agriculture tractors for operational and driver safety this webinar aims on discussing the mechanical coupling and drops testing methodology along with domestic and export regulatory requirements for agriculture tractors this webinar will also provide a common platform to the designer manufacturers and certification agencies to share their experience and knowledge ladies and gentlemen we will now commence the inaugural session we will first begin with the digital lamp lighting ceremony along with the auspicious lord ganesh vandana may i have the digital light ceremony along with the auspicious lord ganesh vandana please Thank you. Now, I would like to request Shrimati Pamela Tikku, Senior GM and Operating Director, ICAT, for the welcome address and introduction of ESPA. Ma'am. Thank you, Amritaj. A very good morning to all of you, uh, colleagues uh, from automotive industry, uh, fellow ICATians, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning. Um, it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all in on this webinar uh, which is focused on mechanical coupling and drops testing methodology and regulatory requirements for agricultural tractors uh, agricultural tractors are one of the very important industry segments in india and india is one of the largest exporters of agricultural tractors and hence it forms a very important industry uh which contributes largely uh, not only to for uh, you know uh, the domestic market but also creates a lot of jobs and also helps in uh, the agriculture sector in a greater way i would like to touch upon uh, aspire today aspire is basically an uh, technology platform portal which has been uh, uh, you know launched under uh, ministry of heavy industries flagship program under uh, under um, capital good scheme to uh, develop a platform wherein industry uh, and academia can come together to resolve industry pain points or issues uh, by collaborative efforts so under this uh, portal uh, we are organizing this webinar on agricultural tractors mechanical coupling and drops testing uh, this particular requirement was uh, notified through gsr 625e uh, and the tractor manufacturers uh, may provide drop structure for the tractors uh, which is basically for the safety of the uh, drivers i would like to inform you that the uh, i icat is well equipped with dedicated drops and mechanical coupling facility uh, which can enable design uh, development and also conduct 
structure and validation tests as per ISO, IS, OSHA, OECD, EU, EC and, and other standards. And um, I am very happy to share with you all today that ICAT has conducted more than 100 uh, ROPS testing and more than 50 uh, mechanical coupling testing till date. Um, I would like to inform you that under the uh, vision uh, of Honorable Prime Minister on Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign, so ICAT uh, is uh, trying to uh, help enable this vision realization by helping industry to develop products locally and also uh, develop uh, the, the infrastructure which will enable such local development. And uh, I hope today's seminar, we have two uh, speakers uh, today. Uh, one Mr. Ashish Singh from our fatigue lab, a young engineer will talk about uh, the aspects of testing uh, of uh, mechanical couplings and drops. And Mr. Gopal Singh Rathor from our CAD CA department on the how uh, simulation helps in uh, undertaking these uh, tests. I wish you all a very happy uh, and interesting and interactive seminar. Please feel free to uh, ask any questions to the speakers and uh, make this uh, webinar interactive and interesting for all of you. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for setting videos of the webinar in motion with enlightening inaugural address. We also thank you for all your support and guidance in organizing this webinar. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Now, moving towards the technical lectures, we have two lectures. We will start with the main presentations now, followed by the question and answer session for 15 minutes. If you have any question during the presentation, I would request you to kindly write them in a question section along with the name of the speaker they are addressed to. We will take the question on your behalf for all the presentations. I would now request all the speaker of the session to kindly keep their presentation ready. I'm sure that the immense knowledge in the presentation will give us all a better understanding of the topic, agriculture tractors, mechanical coupling, and rough testing methodology and regulatory requirements. Now, for the first presentation of the webinar, I would like to welcome Mr. Ashi Singh. Mr. Singh has completed the tech in automotive design engineering from UPS in 2013. He had also completed MTech in automotive engineering from Bits Pilani in 2021. He has ninth year of experience in fatigue and static strength testing of different kinds of chases and engine companies. He had conducted more than 50 number of mechanical coupling and drops tests for agriculture vector and recommended many design improvement ideas to the audience. The present Mr. Singh is working as an assistant manager in fatigue lab. He is responsible for conducting indoor fatigue testing with a team of 10 people. Mr. Singh will be presenting on topic mechanical coupling and drops test methodology and regulatory requirement for domestic and export factors. I now request Mr. Singh to proceed with his presentation. So, Hello.
So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Krishna Mitan sir, for uh, starting this uh, webinar. So, I'm actually sitting from Fatigue Lab, and uh, uh, I'm here uh, to give my some uh, experience, and we will talk about uh, how we conduct the testing of mechanical coupling as well as ROFs. So, also we will discuss some uh, uh, methodology and regulatory requirement uh, in India as well as for uh, overseas. So, uh, so uh, for uh, tractor ROFs, uh, the notified standard is uh, as per GSR 625B. And it is applicable for the tractor who are provided with the ROFs in India. And uh, it is uh, where, wherever condition like uh, if manufacturer uh, is providing the ROFs, then it has to be conducted as per IS 11821 uh, for static and 2019 for dynamic testing. So it is applicable in India from uh, 1st October uh, 2012 onwards. So if manufacturer is not providing the ROFs uh, for Indian market, uh, so it, it is not mandatory to conduct the test and to get the certification. But if it is provided uh, uh, this uh, ROFs on the tractor, then it has to be uh, certified as per uh, IS uh, 11821. So for export model, like uh, many of manufacturing in Indian uh, uh, industry, uh, they are exporting their uh, tractor for overseas customers like in European country and African countries. So uh, for European uh, norms, we follow EU uh, 1322, lecture 8, 9 and 10 for ROFs testing and for OECD uh, uh, customers, OECD countries, uh, both 4, 6 and 7 applicable for the ROFs test. Similarly, for mechanical coupling, uh, Indian norms is as per AIS uh, 91. Uh, part 1 and part 2, so part 2 is basically for a tractor and part 1 for different, different uh, uh, like uh, tractor and trailers. And this is as per Indian norms. For European norms, we follow EU 2015-208, as well as EC directives for export model uh, EC R55. So EU and EC both applicable for European countries uh, wherever it is applicable. So for export model in ICAT, we conduct the test uh, as per the customer manufacturer and uh, the third party agencies uh, which are uh, 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 authorized to give the certification for overseas uh, customers. So they witness the test in ICAT and uh, on the basis of our test report, they provide the certificate. So whether e, e certification, e mark certification, it is given by the, that uh, agency, like PCADR.U, these are the same agency in India to take care of export homologation activities. So these are two uh, mechanical coupling and ROFs uh, notification and standard for, for India and export model. So now we talk about uh, what methodology we use uh, uh, for testing in ICA uh, in, in collaboration with customer manufacturer as well as uh, test witness agency if it is for export model. So we will go for uh, AIS 91 part 2 only. Uh, similar, same way uh, we can go with EC R55 as well as EU uh, 2015-208. So Basically, AIS 91 is more over same as per EC R55. So uh, these are some coupling type like uh, clevish type, uh, hitch hook type, and uh, swinging drawer. So these type of coupling we generally use in uh, tractor uh, uh, case. So we use uh, this for uh, towing this uh, trailer by the uh, road vehicle. So these are some types. So uh, now we are talking about the dimensions and locations of mechanical coupling with reference to tractor. So if tractor is provided with the, this uh, uh, mechanical coupling, so it has to be satisfied with uh, this dimension uh, with reference to the uh, PTO shaft. So as you see, uh, uh, the length of uh, hole of swinging drawer from the outermost point of uh, this PTO shaft is L length. And uh, this will vary depending on the uh, category according to ISO 730. So ISO 730 is basically the types of coupling. Like uh, uh, one is uh, clevish type, second is uh, uh, hitch, uh, hitch type, hook to hook type, and third is basically for swinging product. 
so if that uh, Lewis dimension is uh, like uh, small d is uh, the whole de uh, dimension is 33 in all the cases and uh, the dimension of b uh, in swimming graph r case is 60 60 and 70. similar way the location uh, like the l length from the video shaft is very depending on the category of uh, uh, mechanical coupling as well as uh, this uh, vertical load what coming on this uh, uh, draw bar, uh, swinging draw bar or previous type uh, mechanical coupling. It depends on the location uh, L. So if it is 400, then it, it is 400, then 12. But uh, it also depends on the mechanical coupling type. So these are some dimensions and location we need to select uh, for uh, uh, installation of mechanical coupling on the track. Similar way, uh, there are some special applications uh, where uh, uh, we uh, uh, do not use PTO uh, driven equipment uh, as well as there is uh, some PTO driven equipment which are very large. So if the short position of uh, PTO shaft, then we use uh, other case. Um, we use one case and if it is extended type, so we use another case. Like in drawbar location for a uh, special application, uh, there is three criteria like uh, one, two, three, which I told you uh, for uh, different type of coupling and the location is uh, uh, as per figure one uh, like uh, the location is with, uh, with l is uh, length between the drawbar and the uh, center hole of uh, coupling so it, if it is short position then it is 250 we can take 250 if it is extended position we can take 500 and then same way uh, we select this vertical load on the drawbar so if it's short position then 15 kilometer and if it is extended position then it is uh, 6.5 kilometer so these are some special uh, cases, uh, but in general cases, we use uh, generally uh, uh, this type of uh, like uh, ISO 123. These uh, dimensions we need to take for installation of mechanical coupling on track. So these are some uh, dimensional and uh, installation checks. Then uh, uh, coming to uh, requirement for certification. So generally, uh, we need to satisfy this uh, sample with reference to two modes of testing. One is static testing, another is uh, dynamic testing. So it is optional as per AIS 91 as well as uh, ECR 55. So manufacturer and test agency has to mutually agree whether we need to conduct the static test uh, uh, or dynamic test. So uh, generally static tests are little bit difficult because this uh, criteria of acceptance is very stringent and uh, the permanent deformation has to not be more than 25% uh, of uh, elastic deformation. So what we do generally in static test, uh, we take uh, two information from the customer. Uh, one is MT, another is uh, MR. So MT is basically technical uh, permissible total mass of the tractor. Similar way, MR is technical permissible total mass of road vehicle, which we call trailer some case or trolley. And then a static drawbar load on coupling, which is coming by uh, this uh, table, like this table. So if it is short length, it is long length. So as for that, we need to uh, uh, get this uh, as well. So uh, horizontal traction load test, uh, uh, there is two tests basically in static. One is horizontal load test, another is vertical load test. So this is one uh, clevish type mechanical coupling in which we are applying the load in horizontal direction. This is basically longitudinal axis of tractor. And uh, we need to apply the uh, static load, which is uh, 1.5 times the MR load. So MR load is basically total mass of the load vehicle is uh, given by the manufacturer. So whether it is 3 ton or 2.5 ton or 5 ton, so it is depending on uh, the manufacturer design uh, values. So what we do, we do first uh, uh, pre-traction load test. Uh, to release any kind of stresses or residual stresses. So pre-traction load test is basically we need to apply the load in horizontal direction in this coupling from zero load to 15% of 1.5 times of MR. So let's say uh, if the MR load is uh, uh, two ton, then we need to apply the load of uh, uh, th uh, three ton load and then 15% uh, uh, of three ton load we, we need to go like 450 kg 4.5 kilometers. So then we need to repeat, repeat this step twice to uh, release any any kind of residual stresses is there in the coupling. 
So uh, we need to go the load from zero to 4.5 minuton two times, like increasing and decreasing. Zero load, then from zero to 4.5 minuton and zero. Load. So after doing uh, this twice, uh, when we release the load in second event, we need to apply the load up to 500 decanuton of 5 kilonewton. So while we go from 4.5 kilonewton or let's say 10 kilonewton of 15 percent is 10 kilonewton. So we need to hold the uh, load at 5 kilonewton for 60 seconds. And then we need to go the load from 5 kilonewton to 1.5 times uh, this MR load. So let's say this 1.5 times of MR load is uh, 30 kilonewton. So we need to apply the load from 5 kilonewton to 30 kilonewton. And then after applying the load, we need to release the load up to 5 kilonewton. So we need to get uh, hysteresis curve or load versus deflection curve. And then we need to check after releasing the load, like at 5 kilonewton, the overall displacement or deflection of the coupling is within the 25% of elastic deformation. Let's say if we are applying the load from 5 kilonewton to uh, let's say 30 kilonewton and your deflection is uh, 5 mm, total 5 mm. And then when we release the load up to 5 kilonewton, so 25% of uh, 5 mm is around 1.25 mm. So we need to, uh, this uh, overall uh, permanent deformation has to be less than 1.25 mm, whether it is 0.8 mm or 1 mm, it is acceptable, but it should not be more than 1.25 mm. So this test is very stringent because uh, uh, whatever we use the coupling, generally, like in Singwing Rava case, uh, this uh, sample get failed because a permanent deformation uh, came very, very higher side. So we generally suggest customer to go about the dynamic test, uh, but it's customer choice uh, what uh, they want to conduct. So after that, uh, like uh, if we need to go for uh, vertical load because there is two loads. One is horizontal load test and the other is vertical load test. So after conducting the uh, horizontal load test, we need to apply the load in vertical uh, condition like this is the uh, uh, longitudinal axis and we need to apply the load from the vertical direction. So the vertical load we need to uh, calculate like uh, static load test which is uh, 5 kN to 3 times the static load. So static load, let's say uh, uh, 1000 kg or we get uh, 800 kg from this table, from this table, 8 kilonewton. Then multiplied by the three times and G value. So up to that load, we need to go for the vertical load test. So same way, uh, we will go from 5 kilonewton uh, preload condition to uh, that load, like uh, 20, 26 kilonewton, something like that. So after uh, going that load, we need to release that load uh, up to 5 kN and then we need to check the, the same uh, permanent deformation. So it has to be less than 10% of elastic deformation. So if we apply the load from 5 kN to 26 kN and uh, the displacement is coming uh, like 3 uh, mm. So 10% of 3 mm is uh, 0.3 mm. So it should be less than 0.3 mm. So these uh, two tests uh, we need to conduct for uh, uh, satisfying the AIS uh, 91 part two. And then we will provide the certificate and test reports. Same way if customer is uh, asking for uh, dynamic testing. So because uh, uh, there is there are few chances to get the uh, test uh, uh, done successfully or uh, satisfy the sample as well, uh, static test is very less. So for fatigue testing or dynamic testing, high chances because there is no such criteria of permanent deformation or uh, 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 elastic deformation. So there is only wear and tear and uh, uh, tearing of the sample or breaking of the sample. So in dynamic testing, basically a uh, uh, whole mechanical coupling is installed on the test bed uh, using uh, uh, fixtures or uh, we can select the rear axle also. Uh, and like uh, actual Excel with uh, mechanical coupling and that Excel can be mounted uh, on this wheel up. Uh, but uh, generally we ask for the uh, mechanical coupling and sub parts and we mount this mechanical coupling on uh, blocks or using some adapter plates. Then uh, we'll apply the load uh, uh, as per the calculation. Uh, 
like uh, same uh, MT, MR, and the static load values we need to take from the customers. And then we need to find this horizontal uh, load component of, of this uh, test. So the horizontal load uh, component of this test is D value. And this is the G times so 9.8 times MT into MR upon MR, MT plus MR. So these horizontal force component we find and depending on this, uh, we need to calculate the horizontal load. And the static vertical load, uh, uh, from that we need to find the vertical force used, uh, for uh, this test, uh, for the dynamic testing. So generally there is uh, two criteria to select the horizontal load. One is uh, plus minus 0.6 uh, times the D value. Another is uh, horizontal load we can select D value, one times uh, D. So uh, there is two test methods. One is we are applying the load in uh, sinusoidal wave in both the direction, alternating load like uh, this uh, uh, swinging drawbar uh, pressure direction as the traction direction. So like compression and uh, tensile, both way we, we can apply the load, F, F load, because test load. So F load is uh, uh, square root of uh, FB square plus FH square. So this is basically resultant of uh, of vertical load and horizontal load. So horizontal load, if we are selecting like alternating case, then we need to take plus minus D. And uh, one times we, we put the 0.6D here in FH, and then we find out uh, this uh, compression load, test force, and then negative direction, and we find out tension load. So tension compression, we can apply the load. Another case is uh, we can go with the FH is only D. And in such case, it is the only traction or pressure case. Means we need to apply the load either in tensile direction or in compressive direction. So uh, FH, we can put D only and FB the same for, for both the cases and we find out the test forces. So generally we conduct the test in uh, traction direction because to avoid any kind of slackness or uh, uh, if we apply the load in both direction, like in alternating forces, then there is uh, graph slackness due to loose uh, fitting of uh, pin in, in, in the company. So to avoid such condition, we only uh, uh, conduct the test in rising force condition like traction and pressure. As well as uh, we need to apply the vertical load as well as horizontal load. So either we can conduct the test uh, by putting two uh, actuators. One is vertical, other is horizontal. And with the same phase, we can apply the, these two loads. Otherwise, we can put, uh, find out the resultant of this FH and FB. And then angle of loading using uh, tan inverse FB upon FH, and we can apply the load in uh, angular direction with uh, this uh, coupling. To apply the load in uh, angular direction, we need to fabricate uh, this adapter. Uh, this adapter is basically to apply the load in angular direction. So if it is 38 degree, 20 degree, 15 degree, so it adapts the actuator in angular direction. So uh, basically, this is the requirement, and uh, the acceptance is uh, there is no such uh, wear and tear or crack of the sample. Generally, the samples crack happen where it is uh, coupled with uh, uh, this bracket because this is going to be bending, bending load. The vertical load will create bending, and the horizontal component will create uh, traction or tensile load. So uh, load but, uh, calculation, it is, it is one of the example, like uh, if uh, uh, MT is given by the customer in 1900 kg, so a tractor mass, load vehicle mass is 700 kg, then we can find the D value uh, from here. Uh, from uh, this equation, we find the D value, which is coming uh, for this case, 5.016 kilometer. Similar way, we can find the horizontal load component and horizontal load we have taken here is uh, like traction, what I, uh, I told, like uh, we, we conduct the test in rising condition only in one direction, not in alternate direction. So FH is 1D, the same value of D it will be FH. Then static vertical load, it is already given by the customer depending on this uh, location of uh, singing drawbar and the type of singing. Drawbar. So it is 250 kg and then uh, we select the maximum vertical load. We need to calculate from this equation. 1.5 times S and 99.8. So after we are getting FH and FB value, we find the resultant from uh, this equation under root FB square plus FH square. 
So after getting uh, resultant test scores, we need to apply the load in angular position, like in this direction, but only in tensile direction, not in multiple direction. Similar way, we can find the angle of force. So tan inverse FBIFH, we will find this uh, angle. So this is regarding the dynamic uh, test of uh, mechanical coupling and uh, this one for uh, the static uh, test for mechanical coupling. So we can go either uh, this test or uh, dynamic test. Now uh, regarding uh, test methodology uh, for uh, rollover protective structure. So uh, as we know, uh, purpose of ROPS is to provide the safety zone of the driver in case of overturning or hitting of the machine or tractor. So this is one of the example like uh, this tractor when it will going to overturn, uh, it will rest to the uh, position. So one of the case uh, is uh, very famous like uh, during uh, Kisan Andolan in Delhi, uh, uh, one driver get crushed inside this uh, uh, during the stunt uh, or we can say during uh, this agitation, uh, it will crush with, uh, between the tractors. So if there is the ROPS member in there, then his life will be saved. So this is the types of uh, ROPS, like two post ROPS, four post ROPS, and table type ROPS. So we are covering here uh, IS uh, 11821, uh, Indian scenario for the standard. Also, we will talk about the OECD as well as uh, ROPS uh, EU standards. We will compare with the IS 11821. So uh, the requirement is basically for performance evaluation of metallic props. This should be metallic props, and uh, we need to conduct the test using a static load in laboratory. And this is applicable for the tractor having mass more than 600 kg. The tractor mass below that, then props uh, is not applicable. And then acceptance criteria for uh, this system. We will discuss about this. So first is the driver protection zone. Uh, so it is kind of a dummy or we can say uh, a zone uh, in which a driver can move uh, on this uh, seat. So we need to uh, fabricate uh, this kind of uh, uh, a zone using pipes or uh, metallic uh, pipes. So we need to uh, put this uh, driver zone on the SIP location and uh, we need to uh, match the SIP location of the seat with the driver uh, protection zone. So after placing uh, this uh, zone on the driver, uh, we need to conduct the test and we need to check whether all the ROPS members after applying the load in all the direction. The ROPS member should not touch uh, this uh, zone at any, any point of the testing or after the test. So uh, uh, this is a, a very critical uh, uh, zone which we need to fabricate as per the standard. So all the dimension is mentioned mentioned in the standard, whether it is 1322 or IS11821. Similar way, before doing the uh, test uh, for certification, uh, we need to check uh, this SIP location provided by the driver or manufacturer is same or not. So we need to check using uh, this uh, wooden fixture. So this wooden fixture is uh, for SIP measurement as per ISO 5353. So this is a standard uh, uh, fixture, a wooden fixture. It is already given in each and every dimension is given in uh, standard. I have picked this uh, uh, screenshot from that standard. So we need to uh, uh, put uh, this uh, wooden fixture uh, with uh, this seed. First, we need to apply some uh, 20 kg mass uh, on this seed as well as uh, uh, then remove this seed, uh, this mass, then apply the driver mass of 65 kg, I mean dead mass uh, on this location, like at uh, vertical load, center vertical force, we need to apply uh, 65 kg, then remove that load. The same way we try, uh, do this activity thrice to, to reduce any kind of uh, residual in the form the structure of the seed. So any kind of stresses or any kind of settlement of uh, this uh, seed is then using uh, this vertical. Then uh, after doing this activity, we need to apply 100 Newton load, 10 kg load at this back pan and uh, to, to uh, fully uh, engage the driver uh, seat back with this pan. After doing this, uh, we need to find uh, the SIP location. So the SIP location is uh, 
130 mm away from uh, this back pan and uh, it is 79 mm uh, above uh, this uh, below location so this location this point will be uh, find out on the two, both direction like this side as well as that side so both side of the sheet we find the this location and this location is marked with reference to uh, Excel of or uh, chassis of the tractor. So after finding the SIP point, we need to fix uh, this driver protection zone with matching this one point. Uh, the point one is the SIP location, and these one uh, point one will be uh, uh, superimposed with the SIP location. So after doing this activity, uh, we need to go for the testing. So for conducting the test, first we need to prepare the sample. So the tractor sample is uh, prepared by uh, removing all the four wheels of the tractor and uh, then fixing this uh, wheel up with uh, some T fixtures or uh, mounting fixture. And these T fixture is mounted on our back plate using T slot uh, locations. So this either ROS is provided by the manufacturer or the manufacturer or any any component manufacturer can provide the ROPS, but it has to be applicable on particular tractor and it is declared by the customer. So uh, we don't want a complete tractor, only chassis part as well as this uh, members who are contributing in, in storing the energy during the testing, like uh, uh, mounting of this uh, uh, ROPS, like there, is there any rubber mount or nut bolts or any, any kind of structure which are contributing in deflection or uh, absorbing any strain energy. So we secure this uh, tractor on our bed plate and uh, there is no any support from the bed plate other than uh, these four uh, bed plate uh, fixtures. Now, uh, after uh, securing this tractor on the bed plate, we go for this uh, loading. So the sequence of loading is defined uh, in, in different, different standards. Like uh, the ISC standard is as per Indian uh, road condition or Indian scenario. So the load condition is different uh, in Indian case and in OECD and EU case it is different. So like uh, in ISO we will, uh, IS 11821 part two, we, we go for first longitudinal, first crushing loading from the side, second crushing and second loading, longitudinal loading. But uh, in uh, OECD code four, uh, EU 1322-2014 and Exer A. So I have shown this like EU uh, OECD code 4 is for agriculture and for state tractor with the ROFs. Then OECD code uh, 6 is for front mounted narrow track wheel track tractor. But the ROFs is mounted on the front side, not rear side. <laughs> and uh, same, uh, this is explained in Exer 9 of uh, EU 132. Similar way, OECD code 7 and uh, EU 1322 Technexture 10 are the same. And it is for rear mounted narrow track tractors. So the sequence is like uh, in OECD code 4 and uh, Annexure 8 of EU 1322, uh, loading, longitudinal loading, first crushing, long, uh, loading from the sides, second crushing, and then second longitudinal loading. And the loads, uh, I mean, has to be calculated using this formula. So similar way, uh, code six and code seven, it is given like uh, uh, loading at the rear of the structure, rear crushing, uh, long, uh, loading at the front of the structure and loading from the side of the structure. So these are some comparison between OECD, EU and the Indian standard. Now, if we talk about uh, IS11821, so first longitudinal loading and uh, the loading has to be done at least because uh, at least 50% mass of the rear axle. So loading has to be done at the rear side. And uh, the load should be per, uh, for, parallel to the uh, longitudinal line of the tractor. And the loads to be provided at the W6 of the tractor, like this is the width of the rock. We calculate the uh, six times lesser uh, width of the tractor and then apply the load at this location. And the load or strain energy, because uh, in tractor case, uh, we need to find the energy uh, to satisfy uh, of this standard. So strain energy shall be uh, 1.54 times the mass of the tractor. If the mass of the tractor is 1000 kg, so we need to go 1400 joule of the energy to, to meet this criteria. 
like first loading criteria now we do the then second is the uh, uh, first crushing criteria so we need to apply the loading vertical direction of the tractor so basically there is two uh, there is two uh, crushing load one is uh, first crushing another is second crushing so first crushing in case of uh, uh, four post uh, rocks is there then we need to apply the first crushing at the rear and uh, second crushing at the front but if it is two to, uh, two post of rocks then uh, we need to apply the load two times at the rear means at the above this uh, box structure so uh, crushing load from the top side of, of this uh, tractor and uh, we need to place the loading beam at the uppermost position of the rocks we need to apply the load 20 times the mass of the tractor like uh, the mass of the tractor is 1000 kg then we need to apply the load of 20 km and uh, then uh, we need to maintain the load for 5 minutes or uh, any any kind of series of deflection like if we are applying the load up to 20 km and deflection is going to be more and more so it is not stopping so we need to hold the load till the deflection is stopped or ceased so that we can check uh, whether rocks member is going to penetrate its uh, uh, clearance or not if it is not penetrating it is safe then second loading from the side so we need to check uh, which side is more severe generally the rocks members are uh, symmetrical in, in insulation so we can apply load any any direction like either left side from the left side or from the right side so we need to check that uh, condition first like if the uh, rocks is uh, more nearer to this clearance zone from the right side then we need to apply the load from the right side but generally it is symmetrical so we can apply the load any any of the side then uh, we need to apply the load using a load distribution device or LDB or loading beam and it has to be less than 500 mm. So we, we need to apply that this uh, curve location or W by 6 location. So curve location, uh, uh, we need to fabricate one fixture adapter and we need to weld or fix this uh, adapter at the side location and apply the load to get this energy 1.75 times this uh, MT. So generally these energies are uh, strain energy and uh, we need to go step by step like 5 mm, 10 mm, 20 mm. And then we need to calculate the cumulative energy by apply, uh, multiplying the forces with the step load application. So after getting this energy, we need to stop the test and we need to check whether side members of props is going to penetrate this uh, uh, DLB or not. If it is not going to penetrate, that is safe. Similar way in second crushing, like uh, if it is uh, four, four uh, post drops, then we need to apply the load at the front. If it is two post drops at the same location, we need to apply the load two times. Like first crushing we have seen, and this is second crushing. So uh, second crushing, uh, the load is the same 20 times uh, this mass of the tractor, and uh, we need to seize, uh, check the load for five seconds and whether this uh, load is seizing or not. The same uh, uh, test we need to conduct twice. Like in second sequence and in third time, second third third sequence. Similar way, uh, we need to apply the load in uh, fifth uh, times, and that is uh, second longitudinal load test, uh, in which uh, we need to apply the load from the front. Either we can push this uh, uh, rocks from the front, or we can push this rocks from the rear. So generally, in four post rocks, uh, first loading is from the rear if it is four post drop and if it is four uh, four post drop then second loading from the front but in case of two post drop the both loading will be from the rear but it has to be at the second location like first we conduct from the rear from the rear at the left side then from the front we need to conduct from the uh, right side from the right side we need to apply the load. and this energy is less and it is uh, 0.3 times this of the tractor so uh, this is a very easy case because anyhow we, we apply the load and it is going away from the DLB so uh, clearance zone so it is not going to penetrate any so uh, these are some load calculation like the tractor mass if it is 32 kg so we can multiply it with 1.5 times the mass so this energy we required for the real loading uh, case 64 kilo will be required for the first crushing case and from the side, the energy will be uh, more from the side because it is very severe case. 
So all the tests, uh, only like side load is very severe. So 5600s will be required for the side load condition. And uh, 64 kilometer for uh, second crushing and 1120 zone for uh, no second longitudinal loading or we can say front loading. So for acceptance criteria of the loss, uh, basically we need to satisfy load as well as energy. Uh, if it is both it is given, otherwise in tractor case, either energy or load. Also, uh, we need to conduct this overload case in case uh, suppose uh, we are applying the load in sidewise and uh, we are getting, let's say, 4000 joule of energy during the in between the test. And uh, the force we are getting, let's say, 25 kilometer. So if we are applying the load and the energy uh, reached up to 5000 uh, 5, joule, but the load decreases from 25 kilometer to, let's say, 18 kilometer. So the load is decreased by more than 80 percent of 25 kilometer. So in such case, we need to apply the overload test, and uh, in that uh, we need to go 20 percent more uh, energy, and we need to apply 5 percent, 10 percent, 15 percent energy more with the same condition. So we can say instead of 5600 joule load uh, energy, we will go more 20 percent. So 20 percent is around uh, let's say 1200 joule. So we need to go around 6800 uh, joule instead of 5600 joule. So uh, these are some acceptance criteria, and uh, in all the cases, uh, ROS shall not be penetrated uh, this clearance zone. So this is the main acceptance criteria. Also, uh, to uh, satisfy any cold condition like our tractors uh, generally move in very high altitude or cold area like in the Gulf or Lake area. So uh, these ROS material get affected. Uh, or it get brittle uh, during this high low temperature condition. So to, uh, to check this ROS test in low condition, generally uh, we take some pieces of uh, ROS structure and uh, we conduct, uh, we make this specimen like uh, these, uh, even like 10 by 10, 10 by 9, 10 by 8, length and width. Length and width. So uh, sorry, thickness and uh, width and uh, the length uh, we can choose as per machine applicability. And we put uh, this uh, specimen at minus 30 degree uh, for uh, sometimes like eight hours, 10 hours. And then we apply this uh, impact test, we notch uh, charpy test, and we check whether the energy is in more than uh, specified error. If it is more than this uh, energy, then uh, the rocks will sustain in cold area, whether it is going to be over time. Or not. So thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for patience listening. and. Uh, we are open uh, to take any questions after the completion of this uh, session. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the excellent presentation. It was very precise and relevant presentation on topic mechanical coupling and ROPS test methodology and regulatory requirement for domestic and export practice. I hope you all are enjoying the proceedings so far. Now for the second and final presentation of the webinar, I would like to welcome Mr. Gopal Singh Rakhor. Mr. Rakhor has conducted, completed BTEC in mechanical engineering from VIT University Bangalore in 2013. He had also completed MTech in design engineering from Bits Filani in 2019. He has nine years of experience in CAE, structural, implicit, and explicit, CFD, and multi body dynamics. He had presented two research papers in the field of engine flow dynamics in SA international conferences. He had also presented technical papers in Alter Technology Conference in 2016 and 2018 
At present, Mr. Rakhor is working as a deputy manager in CA lab at ICAN. He is responsible for execution of CAD CA projects and new CA pathology development physical test coordination. We welcome you, sir. Mr. Rakhor will be presenting on the topic mechanical coupling and Rob's evaluation through CA analysis. Now, I request Mr. Rakhor to please proceed with his presentation. So, Thank you, Amrita Ji, for uh, introducing me. Uh, a very warm welcome to all the attendees uh, to attend this uh, webinar. So today I'm here for presenting uh, uh, on this uh, CE simulation aspect of mechanical coupling and drop structures. So before going into the uh, technical topics, I will just introduce you on uh, what we do at, at the CAD-C lab in ICAD. So basically, we are into the providing engineering services to various uh, customers in the field of automotive and non-automotive areas, which includes CAD development, design engineering, stand durability, thermal, CFD, NVH, crash, multi-body, and electric vehicles. So we try to cater the industry in the field of design engineering and development in the product development phase. Here is a lab infrastructure we have at ICAT, uh, which includes uh, uh, various software and hardware facilities. Uh, in the hardware we can, as you can see over the screen, we have a high performance uh, computing cluster used for solving uh, full crash simulations. And in terms of software, we work on uh, design for Annex CATIA and for simulation, we use Altair, Ansys, MLC, and Avaris. These are the various industry domains uh, where we are providing engineering services, which includes automotive, railways, aerospace, and many more. There are some of the cases you can see on the screen, uh, which we have uh, catered to industry in the field of strength and durability, uh, which includes component structural, low cycle fatigue, high cycle fatigue, transient shock simulations, and various other simulations which you can see on the screen, which includes tractor seat analysis, fuel pump snap rate, bus structures, uh, model frequencies, structural durability, etc. Coming to the next aspect is the thermal simulations. Uh, we work on uh, various aspects of thermal analysis. Uh, some of the projects you can see uh, includes battery thermal, then exhaust manifold, thermal plus uh, mechanical loading, electronic components, thermal study, and muffler thermal simulations. Next one is CFD simulations, which includes uh, flow analysis, basically. So you can see some projects related to exhaust manifold and valve flow analysis in cylinder flow simulations of a diesel engine. Next one is the crash and impact. So this is the area where we are going to talk about in the ROPS uh, also. And uh, some of the projects you can see, it includes bus rollover simulations, complete bus rental crash, truck cabin impacts, POPs and ROPS simulations for tractor and construction equipment vehicles. And even uh, we can do work on say drop analysis of say electronic components, etc. Next one is multiple dynamics. So we, here we try to study the force extraction from the system or an assembly. Uh, which can be a rigid body or a flexible body system. And some other projects include like bus vehicle dynamic study, trailer dynamics, uh, wall train mechanisms, rake and and pinion motion study, etc. And the facility which we provide to services, it, it includes 3D printing and additive manufacturing, uh, where we can make or build pro protos, prototypes in the uh, metal as well as plastic parts. Now, coming to the main agenda of the webinar, so we 
so we work on lots of simulations in uh, CAE, uh, wherein we can try to predict a performance of a part of an assembly uh, before we go for actual testing. So that so overall objective is basically to reduce the timeline of the product development. So in case if any failure is happening in the physical testing, and then we try to solve that uh, problem. Before that, we can just have a check of it in a simulation uh, environment uh, to understand whether it is going to sustain such loading conditions or not. So first topic which I will be presenting is on drops evaluation through CA analysis. So about drops, as we have already seen in the previous presentation from Ashish, that drops include basically is a rollover protective structure, and these are designed for the protection of drivers to minimize the likelihood of the driver injury, which might result from accidental overturning or rollover. So what is what we are going to present is about the ROP simulation through radio simulation tool solver. And the first standard which we are taking here is IS11821. So here are the simulation load cases, and we are going with the two poster structure of a tractor. And mass of the tractor is considered as 1500 kilos, and structure is simulated for the given load case in a sequential manner, which we have already seen in the testing uh, PPT also. So here are the load cases which we have. So for the longitudinal load, we have an energy requirement, so which is 1.4 times my mass of the vehicle. That gives me around 2100 joule of energy. Similarly, for vertical crush, we have 20 times of the mass of the tractor, that is 30,000 newton meter. And for the transverse load, we have 1.75 times of the energy. So it's around 2625 joule of uh, energy to be uh, absorbed by the structure. This is a clearance zone, so we need to place it on the seat of the tractor. And uh, this is a zone wherein we don't want any penetration of the rocks into, into this clearance zone as an acceptance criteria. You can see the AT model. It's a very uh, simple two poster model which we, uh, has been taken, in which you can see there are uh, like what is a uh, type of material which is being used. So, tubular st structure with a grade of IC310 as per IS4923. And other structural parts, as you can see, like there are steel plates or ribs, they are all as, they are all as per E250 as per IS2062. And there is definitely a contact which is going to play uh, in the, an important role uh, during this uh, simulation activity. So there is an impactor which you can see highlighted with the uh, uh, blue color for all the three cases like longitudinal loading, uh, front, uh, uh, vertical crush, and the transverse load. So there is a contact defined between the structure and my actuator. So it's a general contact defined. It's a type 7 as per the radio solver, and it can vary from solver to solver. And such a mounting locations, which is basically getting mounted on my tractor chassis. Uh, so there we are going to have a constraint of my structure. And these are my load cases. So like we have a longitudinal front load. So we, we give it a displacement to check how much uh, it can absorb the energy during that displacement. Then for the crush, we apply a vertical crush load. We give a directly load uh, value. Then again for transverse load, we give a displacement. And then again for a crush load, we give a force value. So basically, this is an exclusive solver. So you can see the total simulation time is around 7.16 seconds. And uh, due to the limitation of the exclusive solver technique, where the time shift depends on the element time, element length, and element material also. You can see the animation of the simulation run. So here, first there was a longitudinal load. Now there will be starting of the crush, vertical crush. And then this is basically the transverse load acting on the structure. So the, it is an important requirement to have all the actuators in moving in a sequential direction to replicate the physical condition in the most uh, close manner, most accurate manner. And that's why you can see the actuators are not leaving uh, just before the, even during the loading. So they are, they are connected to some spring elements. So whenever the structure is going due to the, for example, my uh, structure is going due to longitudinal load in, in, in the horizontal direction, but my transverse actuator should be attached to it so that we can apply, a, uh, we can continue that loading condition through the transverse loading on the structure. This is from the side view. So you can see the longitudinal loading happened. Then the vertical crush, then the transverse load, then again vertical crush. So these type of phenomena can be simulated through an explicit solver or an implicit also. Now coming to the energy plot. So as we, we were having some requirements of energy, meeting the energy as well as force requirements were there to make what the structure to meet as per the mass of the tractor, which was defined in the earlier slide. So you can see that from the initial time step, initial time t equal to zero, when we applied the loading was started in say longitudinal direction. 
So we were able to see that we achieved say approximately an energy of around 2156 Joule. So there was a requirement of achieving this. So we hold it after that because we did not want the circuit to absorb more as per the standard criteria. And then after the internal energy load, internal energy was achieved, we removed our uh, longitudinal actuator. And then there was an application of the particle crush load. So in the time frame of say 0.3 to 0.56, there is a very very small increment of the internal energy uh, due to the vertical loading. As you can see, they are these are acting like a two columns. So they have a good amount of buckling uh, strength. So they do not get if they crumple in that case, the energy also will also, will also be increasing. But in this case, there was a very minimal increase in the internal energy. Then we start applying the transverse load. Where again we can see there is a rise in the internal energy. And we need to check how much internal energy is being absorbed by my structure to meet that criteria. And then again vertical load. So basically we need to check how the internal energy is behaving and whether it is reach, reaching that particular requirement or not. Similarly for the ports, you can see that there was a first vertical load was applied to be around 30 kilometer. Then there was second vertical load. So you can see on the screen there how much the, my load is being achieved during the impact uh, actually was moving in the vertical direction. And then, then we, we check that whether, there's a failure, whether there will be a failure in our structure or not. So we try to understand what is the plastic strain values in our uh, two poster structure. So we were seeing it around 4 percentage. So that's around say 0 0.04. So in the, with the, with the limit also, we can say that around 10 or 11 percent we observe that there's a failure uh, of the uh, material. This is a clearance zone after the run. So in the transverse loading, the severity in itself should be very high comparatively. And not in the case of uh, in the longitudinal case also we can see some clearance observed observed during the simulation. That was all about the ROPS simulation through CA, and uh, that this same methodology can also be applied to any other uh, uh, four poster tractor or any construction equipment vehicle or any type of cabin, as per the Indian norms as well as the uh, European regulations. Now coming to the tractor mechanical coupling evaluation through CA analysis, so. We have seen that what the mechanical coupling is actually doing. So we are referring to the standard the European EU that is 2015-208. So it is basically to couple the two parts or two bodies we can say so there is a tractor and there is a tow vehicle and we want to have a coupling so that the tractor can move the tow vehicle in a uh, desired direction. So you can see some of the examples of what a coupling looks like on the screen. Now, we, now what is the simulation load case we have? So we have uh, we have discussed that we have a static load case and we have a dynamic load case. So here we are seeing an uh, example of a dynamic load case. So you can see that there are some values assumed for uh, tractor uh, coupling simulation activity. So we, we see that we have taken mass of tractor is 2200 kilo, load vehicle 3200 kilos and some static load of 620 kilos. So we calculate the D value and from that D value we get the our vertical component of the force and the horizontal component of the force. And so these are the values you can see like 13.7 around kilometer we are going to apply at an angle of 20.21 degrees from the horizontal. So these are defining the standard and we need to follow the uh, based on the MT and MR values to get the load calculations and the same will be applied for any simulation or physical testing part. So we see that we can have a loading frequency a range is given up to 30 hertz. So we for example we take loading frequency of 5 hertz. But, uh, why, why, why one need to understand that we need to go for a static simulation and to use it for a fatigue or go for a dynamic. So what we were seeing that natural frequency was uh, found to be for this assembly was going to be very on a very higher side. So we took a static results and then proceed for the uh, fatigue simulation using the static stress results. So you can see this is a coupling, a uh, general coupling which has been taken. We, we have all like thick plates, are like 20 mm, 25 mm plates, 12 mm, 14 mm plates. So there's a uh, quite a considerable amount of thickness in the part. And there are eight mounting locations which are on the tractor and they are fixed uh, as a bonding condition. So that can be attached to a fixture in a physical test. And you see, we, we just have to try to fix that, assuming that there is no uh, such considerable amount of deformation happening at that area. And then there are two pins which you can see on the screen. So these are basically for the uh, limit the swivel moment of the coupling in the top view. And there is an upper bracket then drawbar. This is a drawbar which is basically the swing in drawbar example coupling. And then you can model the adapter or not. Uh, it is uh, as per the requirement or to uh, in order to go more deeper into the correlation part uh, to give some frictional contacts in between the adapter and the pin we can model it. So in this case we have uh, modeled the adapter. 
and the load is applied say 13.62 uh, kilonewton in the normal phase normal to the phase of the adapter and then there are some material grade you can see there is a like we have taken for example e250 grade so it's a steel plate grade as per the is2062 and various contacts were assigned to the sim simulation uh, problem so we have given no suppression contact so it's a linear type of simulation uh, we have not modeled any uh, non linear type of contact in this study now you can see that how the deformation plots are happening. So you can see there is a uh, downward movement of the coupling around say 5.8 mm. Then we check the stress plots. So basically the objective was to check how much cycle my coupling is going to sustain. So in order to just understand whether it is good for the physical testing or not and will it, it will achieve the number of cycles or not for example. So here you can see the deformation pattern of my coupling which is uh, like basically due to the loading condition it's a static problem and we can see the the downward movement of the coupling in the direction of uh, vertically downward and then the, we check the stress plot so when we see the stress plots we generally see that in this simulation we are seeing that drawbar is having uh, more amount of stress when compared to the other parts so we try to uh, identify the location so you can see there is a hole here and uh, due to which we can see some values around say 220 mm and there is some uh, stress values at this uh, and the location of the bracket also here due to the say bending loading and the cantilever behavior of the drawbar now we use these values for a static uh, fatigue uh, problem so we have seen uh, results are you can see we have uh, assumed it as a zero base fatigue so basically we are not going into the alternating uh, stress uh, state that can be also done through ca so initially for just for understanding purpose we have taken a zero base fatigue and then we identify an SM curve. so because here we are assuming that we are going for a lot of number of uh, more number of cycles to understand whether my component will sustain the loading cycles or not so actual requirement is around 2 million so 2 million cycles means basically it is going to high cycle fatigue. So we assume that uh, there is a thumb rule of taking uh, more than one lakh cycles as a problem of high cycle fatigue. So we do not observe any partial deformation, but we have the stresses within the elastic limit. And in a low cycle fatigue, that is through an EM curve, that is my strain and life curve, uh, where we take an example where we have a partial deformation and we want to check when my crack is going to start. So that is a problem statement for an EM curve. So here initially we assumed it as a high cycle fatigue. And through this uh, SNK reference, we got some around 90,000 cycles at the, uh, that circular holes and some 86,000 cycles at that bending uh, locations, basically. So it is not going to uh, clear in the physical testing uh, as per the CAE simulation. So this type of projects can be, or this type of uh, activities can be done, or we can uh, revamp the design to understand whether what are the changes we can do uh, to meet the requirement of dynamic loading. Similarly, for static loading also, we can, the same uh, type of methodology can be used and a good amount of understanding which physical testing can be made. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the excellent presentation on topic mechanical coupling and TOPS evolution to CA analysis. Now, we shall move with the question and answer session. We have three questions and the first question is does this ROPS analysis can be done with implicit or explicit solver? The second question is how metal modeling is done for ROPS analysis? And the third question is dynamic loading in mechanical coupling is high cycle fatigue or low cycle fatigue? 
these three questions are to Mr. Gopal. So, The first question was related to whether we can do ROPS analysis in an explicit or implicit solver. So yes, the, both the techniques can be used for solving any ROPS simulation. Only thing is like when we see any ROPS uh, physical testing also, or we see the deformation of the structures. So they go say in the range of say 100 mm, 120 mm. So implicit solver can handle those, uh, but we need to uh, introduce a lot more of nonlinear parametrics in order to make the model converge. And then we, in the explicit simulation, we get the advantage of this. So both the techniques can be used. It depends on the user and what the methodology has been set up. Uh, we can proceed with the ROP simulation. But generally, it has been done with explicit simulation because of high amount of displacement and the non-linearity due to displacement, due to contacts, and even due to the material. Next question was related to how the material modeling is, modeling is done for the ROPS analysis. Uh, so yes, in the, in the ROPS, if you see the structures are made up of generally steel, or if we are going with any other material, for example, we take it as a steel. So we do a tensile test at, because it's a quasi static loading. So there is not a high strain uh, rate of uh, uh, mechanical testing required. So we can initiate with a tensile test and incorporate that in my material model. So it can be through a bilinear material model or it can be through a Johnson Cook model. So basically, we want to uh, use the material properties of the plastic zone wherein we can plot our plastic stress all basically and the plastic strain values in a true, true true stress domain and not in the engineering stress. So in this way, you can easily model uh, your material models and even correlate with your physical testing uh, to uh, understand more in, even into the failure criteria of the material model. So if we make a material model and we see that there is some failure also we can assign in the form of strain values uh, that also in middle. Next question was dynamic loading in mechanical coupling is high cycle fatigue or low cycle fatigue. So as I mentioned that we generally take say problem statement with uh, more than uh, one lakh cycles as a high, high cycle fatigue and uh, lesser than that are considering low cycle. So objective of the low cycle is only to need to check when my crack is going to start and uh, in, the, uh, in that we can use the EM cycle EM curve and in my uh, high cycle fatigue we try to the, generally the problem statements in this the stress values are generally within the elastic limit. And that's why we are able to achieve a lot larger number of cycles and there is no flash deformation happening in a static loading case which is going to further uh, go into my fatigue solver. Next question is uh, why was the cases not considered in the ROPS test? So yes you can consider KC but in this case we have assumed it as a rigid part because cases generally do not uh, deform uh, it can be assumed as a rigid part which is getting attached to my fixture. So that's that was the reason it was not uh, taken here. But if we can see or if we assume that uh, we in a run also in a simulation, we see that the cases are getting a high lot of deformations uh, during uh, say loading conditions that also can be modeled. So it was not modeled here only because assuming it as a rigid, uh, rigid part of my uh, JC. Then next question is related to how to define loading condition in static analysis for ROPS. So as it was mentioned that uh, there is a lot of uh, criteria, energy criteria related to the uh, loading conditions in ROPS and that was shown in the presentation that uh, the loading condition can be defined in the form of displacement or in the force domain. So when you see when you apply for you when you're checking for an energy it is good to go with the uh, displacement case uh, because we are as I mentioned we were going in an explicit solver. So we try to monitor the kinetic energy of the actuator. It should be minimal during the uh, simulation run because as we also see that it's a very uh, very very slow type of or very positive type of loading. So in that case, we apply displacement and when you know the force values already, it was good to apply a force value or in the form of uh, vertical crush load, uh, which we have seen the, in the presentation also. So I think we can apply the load in the form of displacement as well as in the form of the force.
Thank you. Now I request delegates to kindly mail us on your queries and we will get back to you with that with a reply from our esteemed speaker. Thank you all esteemed speakers. Now moving towards the end of the webinar, I would like to invite Mr. Samir Sikalkar, AGM and HPUFTL ICAD for delivery votes of thank you. Thank you. So, So, so your voice is not audible. So kindly unmute yourself. Sir, your voice is audible now. Please, sir. Okay. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, your voice is audible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Amritanish. Yeah, very good morning, all of you. Uh, it's my, my privilege to give a vote of thanks. And I thank you, all of you, for patience listening and taking time away from your busy schedule. Uh, here, I would like to mention that ICAT has developed a lot of experience in testing and analysis of uh, ROPA structure and mechanical couplings. Uh, more than 100 number of props as per various standards for the Indian as well as export homologation we have tested. And uh, equally, our CA team is equally capable of doing the simulation in the software. As an ICAT, we can do the projects jointly for providing the end-to-end -end solutions here uh, uh, i request all of you if any kind of your queries you can feel free to talk with us for any advice for any suggestions for any uh, consultancy or for any uh, testing related uh, requests so please feel free to ask any questions not only on the email but you can call personally to our team members as well as we so we are there to support all of you. We are here to support the industry on timely and at cost effective manner. And I believe that ICAT is taking lead in this. Also, uh, I'm uh, thankful to our uh, supporting team of ICC, that is Vipu, Anurag, Jain, and uh, Kishan Govind. And also to our team members, Mr. Amritanj, Ashish Singh, and Gopal Singh Rathod. They have uh, taken a lot of efforts to make this uh, webinar happen since last uh, one month so i we uh, uh, i congratulate all of all of the all team members also uh, i request all the attendees uh, to keep in touch with icat uh, the team so that you will get the notification of the various webinars and events what we can do there are almost more than 50 numbers of event i what i can do in various labs so keep uh, in touch with ICAT team and uh, listen this uh, very knowledgeable webinars on, at free of cost. Thank you. Thank you very much, all of you, for patience listening. Amritansh. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. I once again thank the esteemed speaker, Mr. Rashi Singh and Gopal Singh Rathod for taking out their time from their busy schedule and gracing this webinar with your presence and insightful presentations. I thank you all the delegates and attendees for their attention and active participation. I hope you found this webinar informative and useful. Thank you all for signing in. With this, I, am, I will be concluding this webinar, wishing you all a nice day ahead. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you, namaste.